Welcome back to our channel and welcome if you're new. It is Sunday here in Panama. My mother is here visiting with us. So we decided that we're gonna have a soul food Sunday. We made some friends in the building that we're staying in. So we invited them over and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what we're doing, what we're cooking and how everything turns out. So my mother is visiting me in Panama and we're having a soul food Sunday. So what are you cooking? Okay, so I'm gonna do some barbecue chicken, macaroni and cheese, and cabbage, lovely fried cabbage. Make some yeast, dinner rolls, and candy sweet potatoes. You're not making any fried chicken? Oh, you know you're doing fried chicken, girl. What about fish? Uh, yeah, oh, that's right. We are going to do some fish. Some beautiful, beautiful fish. And wow. some great seasoning that my lovely daughter found down here that it is like live for. <laughs> Not to die for. Die <laughs> <laughs> and what are you making to drink? <sighs> my famous iced tea. Now, Sweet where is tea. it famous? <laughs> In my own blue world. <laughs> And how long enough. will this meal to take to take? How long will this meal take to prepare? Well, if we get started now, we might have dinner on the table by six. <laughs> We're supposed to be done at six, everyone. It's 321. Let me show you. It's 321. So let's see what time it is when we're done. Yes, let's see. So we're racing against the clock and we have broken down what we're gonna do and how we're gonna get everything done. So I'm responsible for cutting up all the vegetables as well as making the fried chicken, the fried fish, and the black eyed peas and rice. Mama has everything else, but I will help her as much as I can. how I feel it tastes, like if it's if it's seasoned enough, and then I'll add the beans in, and then probably a little bit of water, and let it go from there. Okay, we got all the black eyed peas in there. Stirring them up. I'm actually 
I'm gonna add just maybe like a cup of water to this and then we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, normally I would use a pressure cooker and cook this so fast, but <laughs> I don't have my pressure cooker with me, so. I let the black eyed peas cook for about an hour. Once they got soft, I added in a cup of rice and let it cook until it was absorbed. Okay, mom, tell me what you're doing. Okay, so what I found is with macaroni and cheese, the pasta never seems to be seasoned enough. So I always put a lot of salt in my water because the macaroni tends to absorb it. And then while it's still hot, I put it back in the pot with the butter so that all of it gets coated. And then I add to it the uh, seasonings, the basic trio. All right, so macaroni and cheese time. Eggs, huevos, huevos. Okay, here we so go. We These are the eggs and okay. the milk yes, mixture. Yes, so far. I have leche, four uh, eggs, and, and so far I've had two cans of the evaporated milk. And then I have, because the cheese was very expensive, usually I'll use a cheddar cheese and a mozzarella cheese, but they had Mexican style four cheeses. How special is that? That is like awesome. So it's a Montre, it's a Montre Jack cheddar, Asiago, queso blanco, who knows? It's gonna be delicious because, you know, we're putting it all together here. So um, you beat the eggs up, and then what I like to do is, I like to mix my cheese with my macaroni in the pan. Oh, okay. All right, so that, and you don't lose anything. That's not. And you kind of, Oh, are you gonna like layer it in there? Or are you gonna mix it all up? I, I'll still mix it up, but the whole thing is you want to have some cheese with your macaroni, right? <laughs> and you want to be able to taste that cheese all the way through. So I think it's really important that you do it in levels and layers. And when you work with sh shredded cheese, you kind of need to make sure it's more than just looking like it's mixed. You gotta add a little extra because when it melts, it kind of dissipates, you know? It's like, well, where was all that cheese I put in there? And it's like, you didn't put enough in there. So, <laughs> so you see you have it there, right? And so then I just very gently, where's the macaroni? We're gonna have some cheese and macaroni. And I start looking for it and mixing it all up so that I make sure that I have cheese running all the way through the macaroni. I and I think I your macaroni and cheese is like more of like a solid kind of macaroni and cheese. Like right. it's, it's like it your egg is like your custard and. Yeah, you kind of uh, can cut right into it mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, give it in slices, you know? Yeah. Which kind of works, right? Okay, so you're gonna finish adding the cheese to this. Yeah, I'll add and cheese then... and then I'll add my egg mixture and then we'll pop it in the oven. Okay. So we just wanna finish up. Oops. And now that's all you poured on there? You're funny. You know, <laughs> that's the magic of television. Yes, honey. <laughs> cut in, cut out. And then, of course, we left a little taste for you. Oh, thank yeah. you, Mommy You're dearest. You're welcome, darling. And so if we need a little bit of milk, but uh, all this will cook down to some degree. And we have enough of the milk. So in you use the whole bag of cheese. Oh, yeah. So that's like three pounds, it says three the bag. Three pounds, so yeah, okay. for how many pounds? Two pounds Two pounds of macaroni. In mm -hmm. And this is big macaroni. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the pieces are really big. And again, when it melts, it's gonna be like disappearing. So mm -hmm. you gotta make sure you got enough, you know? Here we go. Macaroni and cheese. I 
process is potatoes, some cinnamon, and some a mixture of brown sugar, white sugar. When I'm at home, I use light brown sugar, dark brown sugar, and white sugar. So here, and again, we're not using our traditional uh, orange sweet potatoes because they weren't in the store. So we're trying these sweet potatoes that are white or creamy in color. <laughs> and <laughs> creamy in color. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. And uh, there you go. Yay. And so once we do that, then we add the butter. The butter, usually I try to get butter that's really hard because it makes it easy to slice it, but this butter is a little softer. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just take and use two knives and uh, put little by little, get some butter on it, on each layer, and uh, it really comes out good. To record the whole process for the meats so I'm just gonna kind of talk through what we did for the barbecue chicken my mom seasoned everything up and then I just put it in the air fryer on um, about 200 degrees Celsius um, I can't remember how long I put it on for I just know I put it on I checked it I flipped it <laughs> and then when it was done I just put the barbecue sauce on it and let it uh, go for a little bit longer for the fried chicken we were using wings and so I cut them all um, like this just between the joint there and then I used this seasoning packet that I get from here. Um, I don't know. I guess it's kind of like if you were to get something like the House of Autry seasoning or something like that. It's like a combination of flour, seasonings. It also has um, egg in it, I believe. And so I just put that on the chicken and fry it up. For the fish, I just cut the fillets down into smaller pieces and then I did the same thing. I coated them with the seasoning that we get from here um, and then fried them up and they really turned out great. <laughs> All right, so I've added to my flour and yeast mixture milk, butter, sugar, and I've beaten my eggs because they will be going in here too. Now when I'm at home, if I have a mixer, I can use a mixer to beat this. And what happens is it helps with the kneading time. You don't have to knead it as much when you're beating it, all right? And so we're gonna add the eggs in. Once I mix those eggs in, remember I only used half the flour. So now I will gradually, after I beat these eggs in, I will get the, the next two cups of flour to make the four cups of flour that's needed for the one batch of rolls.
and there's dessert. Grandma is making a dump cake. So what she's done so far is she put canned peaches that she seasoned up with some sugar and some cinnamon. She put them in the bottom of the pan with all the syrup. And now she opened up one box of cake mix. She put the dry cake mix on top. And then she's just gonna cover it with butter and then it bakes. Okay, dinner is finally ready. Wait, wait, where's the time check? 8.22, it was supposed to be six. <laughs> okay, so we have fried chicken. We have macaroni and cheese. We have candy yams that were made with different yams, but they still taste amazing. Um, we have cabbage. We have barbecue chicken. We have black eyed peas. We have fried fish. And let me see. It's probably too fast. And then we have these rolls. Oh my goodness. And there's dessert. Even though dinner was super late, we still had a really great time. We invited our neighbor Kenya and her three children over, and so we had a total of 10 people for dinner, which was a lot of fun. Kenya is an amazing mother and author, and they are also a traveling family. I feel like being away, sometimes you don't have the same sense of community, so it was really great to try and create that here. The kids approved of the food, which was great. And we all made memories that I don't think we will soon forget. We ended the night with such a great surprise. I recently celebrated my 40th birthday and our neighbor knew about it. So when she went to the grocery store, her son suggested that they pick up a cake for me. It was so nice and such a great surprise and a wonderful way to end the night. So thank you so much, Kenya, Lily, Richard, and Banyan. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday, dear Lauren. Oh my goodness. Happy birthday to you. I can't believe it! <laughs>